Hey friends, it's Coop from Garage and Reviews. And today I'm doing, actually I think this is the first time I've ever done this, basically the best kettlebells. There are a ton of kettlebells on the market. I would say it's one of the more popular pieces of equipment that people add to their home gyms. There are a lot of kettlebells that, just gonna be frank, are the same thing with different names on them. I'm gonna talk some about that and which ones I recommend, but basically I've tested and used pretty much all of the kettlebells that are on the market, both on the cast iron competition and also the adjustable side. I'm gonna tell you which ones I think are the best value, which ones I think are just the best overall. So, Stay tuned, let's get into it. Okay, so there's basically three categories, kind of four if you break one of them out, but the three main ones are you just your cast iron kettlebell. For most home gym owners, if you're just using a kettlebell for something other than kettlebell sport, so you're gonna do double-handed swings as well as things like goblet squats, maybe cleans and presses. You just wanna do everything with them, farmer's carries. A cast iron kettlebell is the option that you should get. If you're wanting to do the sport of kettlebell, you already know which one you should probably get, and those are competition kettlebells. I'm I'm gonna walk through those as well. And then if you want something that has a high weight range, but something that is compact and cheaper, an adjustable kettlebell is an option, but I will say the adjustable kettlebell options are not the same in offering or just ingenuity, anything as adjustable dumbbells. So they're kind of one that I don't recommend a ton, but if you're in the market for them, it may be worth it. But after using just a lot of kettlebells that are on the market, as well as just comparing specs and everything, weighing them, everything online, these are the ones that I think we should look at. Okay, I basically have about eight or so that I've dialed it into for cast iron kettlebells, less of that for competition, and even fewer of those for adjustables. So for cast iron kettlebells, we have the Kettlebell Kings powder coat option. Kettlebell Kings are the ones that I have in my gym, if that tells you anything about what I think about them, but I have a double set all the way from nine pounds. I actually have a 203 pound kettlebell. It's a boat anchor. Use it for deadlifts, that's like it. She's a beast. Also 150 over there. I need to figure out something to do with these. But other options, Rogue Powder Coat, E-Coat, and their USA made powder coat. They have a bunch of options in the cast iron category, honestly more than most people, and are really the name that most people think of when you think of like cast iron kettlebells, weight plates, just like the general commodity goods, which kettlebells are often that. We have Rep Fitness, Bells of Steel, Fringe Sport, American Barbell and Titan Fitness, all within the cast iron category, all that I've tested, all that I'm comparing and will recommend today. Then the competition side, you have all of those brands that I just mentioned, but two in addition that I think are worth looking at is Vulcan, as well as a Primo Primo option, the Pro Kettlebell Apollo Collection, which, I mean, if you're looking for comfort, these things are epic, but also expensive. And then the adjustable category, you have Rep Fitness, Titan, Bells of Steel, Bowflex, and also Power Block. Those are the mains what I look at. Oh, also Iron Master. But let's get into it. First is like the material and finish. The reality is like these are hunks of metal. Typically, at least all the ones I recommend, cast in a single gravity cast. This is kind of a difference. You do not, I just wanna be clear, you do not want a kettlebell that is welded. They're dangerous, they break, they're brittle. Like you want a single cast kettlebell, which means they have a single cast where they pour in hot iron, iron ore, cast iron, sometimes ductile iron, heat it up, compress it, and then that pops out. Then they basically grind off the sides, machine the bottom, send it off to powder coat, and they're in your doorstep. That's what you want. You do not want those vinyl ones. Those are kettle junk, they suck. I'm telling you, you just don't want those. They're not gonna last. Also, the cheap ones that you find on Amazon, the really cheap ones, they, you don't want them either. Like Typically, the companies that I've listed here, you're not even gonna find a gravity cast kettlebell for cheaper on Amazon, and the reason being is scales. A lot of these companies have bigger scale than the companies you'll find on Amazon. And a lot of these are made in similar factories. So like, I would guess a lot of these companies don't make a lot of money on kettlebells. The margins are slim, it's just heavy iron. There really isn't that big of a difference, but there are some differences that I wanna point out. One of them is materials. Here's the thing, most of the ones that I've listed, they're ones from companies that are using cast iron. There is a company that's using something other than cast iron, and that is ductile iron, and that is Rogue Fitness. Rogue Fitness has a USA-made kettlebell that they came out with during the pandemic that's made in the USA of ductile iron. 
The reason that this matters and is worth talking about is ductile iron is a more durable iron than what you'd find with cast iron. In fact, like a cast iron kettlebell is gonna live as long as you want it. You can drop it, throw it, whatever you want, but a ductile iron will last even longer. If you want an even longer lasting kettlebell, that's a material that I would look to. And really the only kettlebells that have that are Sorenexes, which are very expensive, and also Rogues, which actually are the same exact price pound for pound across the board as their imported version, which like, as you'll see, I'll talk about value later. Like they're, I mean, for ductile iron, like they're a great deal, but you also have tiers. So like, all right, I'd say ductile iron is just a different category made in the USA. Those are the rogue ones. Rogue's imported ones. These are the ones that you find in a lot of gyms. These are the ones that are color coded around the rings. These ones, rep fitnesses, bells of steel, American barbell in fringe sport. I'm just gonna come out and say it. I think they're all pretty much the same. <laughs> like just being legit, they're, they're machining the bottom. Like just to, I mean, this may be surprising to you. This is how a lot of fixed dumbbells are. I would like, I'm just not a person that's gonna like make it gray for you. I'll just be cut and dry. Like they're pretty similar kettlebells. When you look at the powder coat, when you look at the diameter of the handles, when you look at the machining, when you look at the cast iron that's used, when you look at the pitting and finish and also the powder, I mean, it's all very similar, which leads me to think that a lot of them are made in similar places and should be expected. I mean, it's just a basic, there's not knurling and things like that that we see with barbells. So because of that, a lot of these, I would look to to the powder coat finish, which is a difference between them and also the value. With that said, here's what I think about the finish. Number one, Rogue's E-Coat on their kettlebells is, I don't like it. It's too slick. It doesn't feel good in hand. Like, it's not that great, which is why I think they came out with the same kettlebell made in the USA, but now do it in a powder coat version. The powder coat on that is really nice. The powder coat that's used on the Rep Fitness, the Rep Fitness, the imported Rogue Fitnesses, and also the American Barbell kettlebells feels very similar to me. It's a, it's kind of gritty. The cast iron is a little bit pitted, but generally it's a good powder coat. There are kettlebells that will feel good in hand and will grip if you use some chalk. The ones that I think kind of stand out in this category are the ones I have in my garage gym, the one that I've used for years, are the Kettlebell Kings. They're a little bit more expensive, but just generally the powder coat on them is my favorite. It's a little bit more like sandpaper-like. It's not like super gritty, but it just lasts a long time. I use them all the time. They feel really good in hand. Of the finishes that are out there, those ones definitely have the best finish, in my opinion, for a cast iron kettlebell, but they're not ductile iron and not made in the USA. So that's where Rogue could be looked at. As far as competition steel kettlebells go, these all have a uniform size, uniform handle. I'm not gonna talk about these as much as I will the cast irons because I'll just give my recommendations at the end. They're just a very different category. If you'd like me to go super in depth on these, let me know in the comments and I can do a separate video on them. I've also done a separate video on adjustable kettlebells. So if you'd like to see that, you can check it out. So I'm not gonna go crazy in depth on those either. This is primarily on cast irons, but I will say on competition kettlebells, most of them will have the same size and shape. It's it's the one that's used in competition. If you're not training for competition, the ones I would look at that are a little bit more comfortable are the Rogue competition kettlebells. They have a thinner handle than most competition kettlebells. They're like a couple millimeters thinner. Also, they have cutouts for your wrists. Some people really like these. Like I prefer them when I'm in the front rack and say I'm doing cleans or if I'm doing snatches, it's gonna feel better on the wrist. But another one worth considering is kind of like the creme de la gym option is definitely the Pro Kettlebell Apollo series. These things are so nice. Honestly, this is the best thought out kettlebell. Just its design, shape, its feeling. Also has magnetic discs that fits on the inside so you can incrementally load. Perfect for people that are using kettlebells in competition. Like these things are amazing. So ones to look at too. Okay, then to comfort. Like most kettlebells, cast iron kettlebells, are gonna have a similar feeling when you're using them because they're a bell. That bell's gonna be sitting on your wrist. I would say generally if that's hurting a lot, it's because you're not using proper technique. Get your technique right first first if you're gonna be using them in the front rack and pressing and things like that, because otherwise they will hurt. It's a different movement than you use with dumbbells. But what can affect the comfort is the powder coat, which I've talked about, but also the diameter of handle. 
So most of these kettlebells are gonna have somewhere in the range of 1.25 up to like 1.5. Some like go all the way to 1.64 inches, depending on how big the kettlebell. Generally, the heavier the kettlebell, the bigger the handle. The reason for that is because they need to add more girth without on the handle without adding more girth at the bell. Also, it just makes it stronger. If you got this tiny little handle and you're throwing it around attached to a big bell, just not as durable. So the heavier kettlebells are typically gonna have a bigger diameter handle on the cast iron kettlebell. Competition kettlebells, they're all standard size, just like barbells, because they use them in sport. But one thing to watch out for, and this is why I picked these ones to recommend, the ones that I've listed, is they have recessed logos. So this is something that you probably wouldn't think about till you get it in and then you start using it. There used to be companies, and there's still companies out there, that in their cast iron mold, they have lettering that sticks out instead of sticks in, which means every time that hits your wrist or hits you somewhere, it's scratching against you, it's super annoying. You want recessed logos and you want recessed numbering. All the ones that I've listed from Fringe Sport, Rogue, Rep, Rep actually used to have ones that would stick out. They've since replaced that molding, which is a good idea. It's very annoying to have that. Typically that's from a company where you will see those companies that don't know necessarily what they're making. They get them out in the world and like, oh crap, this sucks. Another one is Titan, which is more on the budget end, but again, they still have recess numbering. As far as like the adjustable kettlebells, comfort wise, I would definitely say the Rep adjustable kettlebell feels, I would say most like a normal normal cast iron kettlebell due to just its shape. But then another one, Iron Master. Iron Master, if you have Iron Master quick lock adjustable dumbbells, you want the Iron Master handle. It's only a hundred bucks and man, it just fits on there and feels extremely comfortable. A lot like a normal kettlebell. It has a square shape at the bottom, but generally during use feels the same. Another thing to consider is like the weight range and accuracy. Again, because so many of these are, I would guess, made in similar places, they have all pretty similar accuracy. What I looked for though, is what's the accuracy guarantee? So most of the companies don't list these. I have to call the companies and say, hey, this is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. And they're like, oh no, what are you calling us for? And I have to say, guys, what's your weight accuracy on your kettlebells? And they're like, I don't know. And then they go find some rando nerd in the back who engineered them and is like, okay, this is the, this is the weight accuracy. Cause nobody really cares. But weight accuracy matters because you wanna guarantee that it's gonna be within a certain gram or a certain percentage. And if it's outside of that and you weigh it, the company should replace this. We see this with weight plates, you see it with dumbbells, you see it with kettlebells too. So I've done the work for you. This is basically how it works out. Most companies are doing plus or minus 3%. Now I'm gonna talk about the ones that are outside of that are a little bit different, but most of them are offering lifetime warranties on kettlebells, because if they're gravity cast, they should, they're, they're gonna last forever. But they're also offering weight accuracy from when you get them a plus or minus 3%. A couple notables though, Rogue on their USA made kettlebells are offering a plus 3% minus 0%, which means they are never less than the stated weight. They're always within 3% of the stated weight or a little bit higher. Freaking love that. That's typically not found. I think one reason that's probably found is because those kettlebells are made in the USA and they can watch over them more, but that's something worth considering because even if they're out, they'll replace them. But another one worth mentioning is Bells of Steel. They're not doing a percentage, they're actually doing plus or minus 300 grams, which means if that kettlebell is outside of 300 grams, even their heavy ones, either up or down of that stated weight, they'll replace them, which is honestly is a really good guarantee. It doesn't matter as much on the smaller kettlebells, but as you get to those bigger kettlebells, I would hold them to it. <laughs> they actually may change that, that guarantee after this video, but if you order a kettlebell from Bells of Steel, their stated guarantee, plus or minus 300 grams, even on big kettlebells, hold them to it. I mean, that's actually a really good thing. Then you have the range. Most of these go up to like 32 kilograms slash 71 pounds. Some go up to 48 kilograms, which is 106 pounds. Some of these go all the way up to 203 pounds. You can like, depending on which ones you wanna buy, you can get a full set of all different weights. Kettlebell Kings and Rogue generally have the monster kettlebells, the big ones. Kettlebell Kings, what I have in my garage with the wide set. But if you're looking for one where you just want a ton of increments, I would look to Rogue or Kettlebell Kings. The other ones are gonna have as much as I think you'd really like in a kettlebell, up to like 106 pounds. And that's gonna be pretty much every other company. Okay, lastly is value. So basically this is the cost. And this I think really, like just being truthful, this is what matters most for kettlebells. For a lot of products, I don't think this matters as much. Barbells, I think like, 
I'd rather spend more because you're gonna get more before diminishing returns happen. For kettlebells, like diminishing returns happen really quickly. These are very much commodity products. If they're gravity cast, they have a machine bottom, which all the ones I've recommended, and they have colored rings if you like that, they're pretty much gonna be good. But there are some, there's some nuances here. The cheapest kettlebells per pound, not including shipping, are generally rogue. They're offering their 53 pound kettlebell, that's what I priced all these at, at 85 bucks for a 53 pound kettlebell. They do add shipping though, where other companies offer free shipping. So something to consider depending on how many you buy. But Rogue is offering 85 bucks for their 53 pound kettlebell in the E-coat version, the powder coat version, both of those USA made, as well as their imported version that's powder coated, same price. Stepping up from there, American Barbell, 92 bucks. These are very similar kettlebells to Rogue's. Generally, Rogue and American Barbell are often very high quality on their commodity products like weight plates and things like that. They're just very well done, but they're more expensive. So truthfully, I wouldn't suggest the American Barbell ones because you can get the same ones from Rogue and they'll be cheaper. Fringe Sports, if you're gonna buy imported, they're $100 with free shipping for the 53 pound kettlebell. Honestly, this one and rep are really good values. They're both neck and neck, pretty much the same price. With free shipping, based on the ranges that they have, they're both very similar kettlebells. They're both gravity casts, nice powder coat. Like Those are ones that honestly are pretty good values because they're offering free shipping. If you're gonna buy a bigger set, you can save more, I think, with Rogue because they're not baking the shipping costs in. You actually pay for the actual shipping, which with a lot of weight can actually save you some when you add up the total cart. Then I would say on the budget end, you have Titan which again is a gravity cast kettlebell. Not the same league of powder coat feeling, also don't have color rings, just they're a budget kettlebell, but they are still gravity cast, will last a long time still, and those are 90 bucks with free shipping. On the competition side, they range in price. Generally, you're looking for around 130 bucks for a 53 pound kettlebell with ranges. Now, here in a moment, I'm gonna give you my specific recommendation, so I'll give you more pricing on that. And then adjustable kettlebells, Man, they range. It just depends on which ones you get. I will say this, if you have plates already, the Iron Master, like you need to get that one. 100 bucks for the handle. The rep ones though, I think are a good value because depending on the weight range, they can be somewhere between 150 bucks and around 200 bucks and have a really good weight range. So these are my picks. All that I just talked about like, maybe more than you'd ever wanna know about kettlebells. Maybe you skipped along if you're still here. <laughs> you're my team, but let me give you my recommendations. My top pick for most home gym owners that are out there, like I think because of the material that's used, I think also because they're made in the USA, because of their accuracy, also because of their price point. The very clear winner to me are the Rogue USA made kettlebells. They're using ductile iron. I prefer the powder coat. You could go with the E-coat, which we have. They're just glossy, they don't grip as well. I prefer the powder coat, but ductile iron made in the USA, plus 3% guarantee, minus 0% guarantee, like the lifetime warranty, those ones are really good. The problem with them though, and this is really annoying, I wish they would add this, I don't, I, maybe it would add too much to the cost, is adding colored rings. I prefer a colored ring just so I can quickly identify it. Some of you that may not matter, some of you might like the aesthetic of just all black, but if you want the colored rings, the ones I would look at are, because they're so similar, Rogue, Rep, French Border, Bells of Steel. They're imported versions. They're all gonna be machined, they're all gonna feel similar, the price is gonna be similar, they're just like so similar, take your pick. If you're gonna buy a lot of them, probably Rogue, because they're not doing free shipping, they'll be a little bit cheaper when you add them all up. Then, if you got money's no object, you just want the best one, what's, what's Coop's pick? Kettlebell Kings. Kettlebell Kings, their powder coat is fantastic. Not that much of a difference in Kettlebell, actually, from all the other companies, but the powder coat is good enough to recommend it. Also, their price on retail, this is really annoying, but their retail price is not the actual price. You can find discount codes any day of the week, super easy. They just, they just have an inflated retail price so they can cut it down. So after you use the discounts, it's not gonna be that much more expensive than other companies, but generally it is more expensive. Then, if you're on a budget, like the Titan kettlebells. That's the cheapest I would spend on kettlebells. Cause once you go below that, you're not gonna be, get gravity cast and try, you just want gravity cast kettlebells. 
The, the other ones are dangerous, they break, they're not gonna last, don't buy them. The cheapest ones you should buy are Titan. Then, competition kettlebells. I would say for traditional competition kettlebells, I would probably say Bells of Steel or Vulcan, reason being the price. They're all gonna be standard dimension, standard weight, all of that, but the price on the Bells of Steel are really good and they have actually accurate coloring. The Titan ones, they have a competition kettlebell, but just for instance, their 24 kilo kettlebell is actually teal. It's not green, that's not okay. <laughs> the reason that's not okay is because competition kettlebells have specific, it'd be like having a 55 pound weight plate or 25 kilo and it being blue. <laughs> not okay, all right? They're standards we stick to. And so if you just want the cheapest one, Titans are the, those, but the coloring is gonna be all off and super annoying. Then the best overall by far, if you'd like to see a full review on these, let me know in the comments, but the Pro Kettlebell Apollo series, whoo! These are nice. Like if I could have a full set of these, like these are the ones to get. In fact, they're so good, I couldn't find them in the facility because I wanted to like play with them. Somebody took them home because they're that good. They're just so freaking nice. So they're more expensive, understand that, but they have other features that others don't and they are by far the most comfortable kettlebell. They feel fantastic. And then if you're looking for adjustables, I've gone in depth on this, but the rep ones are definitely my recommendation. They're the best, quickest adjust. They just feel the best, most like a cast iron. I don't really think there's one that competes out there. There are the competition series adjustable kettlebells from like Bells of Steel and Titan. Again, like they're okay. They just take a lot to adjust. If you're in the adjustable market, either go with the Iron Masters if you have Iron Masters or go with the reps, definitely. Okay, woo! That's a lot on kettlebells. <laughs> Let me know what you think of like this style of series. Like, do you like me going in this much depth or do you just want the answers real quick? I'd love to hear it. I get feedback on both, but if you like this, let me know in the comments. I just wanted to make sure, like I don't think anybody's talking this in depth about kettlebells and I wanna make sure if you're looking for kettlebells, it can get expensive. These are the facts. Okay, this has been Coop from Garage and Reviews. I'll see you next time. Peace.